Welcome to Engineering Influence, the podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies coming to you from our 2025 Annual Convention and Legislative Summit. So that event is only part of the whole event here in D.C. because after this, we go into the Engineering Excellence Awards, which is our annual celebration of engineering. And I'm joined today by Art Alzamora. He's with Langan, um, an Engineering Environmental Surveying Landscape Architecture and Geology. Pretty much you guys are the soil people. That's right. Um, and we're talking about the project TSX Broadway. Uh, which is a National Recognition Award winning project, but we want to go beyond that as well because you've been involved in a lot of projects that are either EEA related or just really cool stuff in New York City. So TSX, I mean, this is a, you have the historic Palisader that the mission was to raise it up 30 feet from ground, create retail, kind of a new environment there. Right. But while it was being raised and the structural guys were doing their thing and all that. Your job was to make sure that everything below ground could happen. That's correct. Right. right. And as we were talking earlier, you know, before we started, it's, it's kind of that thing about your job is to get in, make sure everything under the surface happens. And you knew your job was well done if no one knew you were there. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, explain that process, the project and kind of, uh, you know, what kind of set it apart in your mind? So to to think about this, the complicated part about the TSX project mm -hmm. is that this was actually, if you look at it, this is the third development of this site. Yeah. So the Palisaders built at the turn of the century, right? And back in the mid 80s, mm -hmm. the Silverstein organization came in and did an overbuild of yeah. the theater already. So there's already four mega columns building up, building a platform over top of the theater. Mm -hmm. So part of our job was how do you tear down an existing 50 story hotel yeah. that's built over a landmark, uh -huh. keep that stabilized, keeping the mega columns and the foundation stabilized, and then building a system underneath the theater mm -hmm. to raise it and then excavate a bunch of rock yeah. and build foundations underneath to create yeah. some of the most expensive re retail mm -hmm. space yeah. in the world. And right? you're not doing this in a field. You're doing this in one of the most heavily trafficked areas of the world. Correct. With a subway, with underground utilities, with correct. every foot is a step back in history. That's right. Correct. I mean, how many, how back in, how far back in time do you think you guys went? So, I, I, well, well over a hundred years. Yeah. I mean, you look at the age of the subway, the age of the theater itself. We're talking both these structures are well over a hundred years, which I, I get it. In Europe, these are considered yeah. infants, mm -hmm. but. In New York City, lot line construction, this type of work is yeah. extremely complicated. And every time that we go in the ground, you're finding something that you were not expecting mm -hmm. or nobody knew existed because there's no records that go yeah. back that far. What's the biggest thing that stuck out in, in your mind for a discovery or a challenge when you got to a point going, that's not supposed to be there or look at this little piece of history. Yeah, I mean, in reality, I know it sounds kind of small, but thinking that all the buildings next to us mm -hmm. are built perfectly straight and within yeah. their property limits, sometimes you Which have- Which is amazing when you think about it for like, you know, in a city like New York that over so many years building. Right. So, you know. I mean, the technology's gotten better. We're a lot more precise and exact mm -hmm. than we were yeah. Hundred years ago, engineering is an experience-based industry. So yeah. you build it one way, you try it, you move on and build it a different way. Yeah. So sometimes what right now we're allowed to build within very strict tolerances mm -hmm. that again, hundred years ago you couldn't. Yeah. So they they were using, you know, maybe less accurate ways. So mm -hmm. they might be a couple inches over the property yeah. line. That couple inches is very difficult to contend with when mm -hmm. you have a neighboring structure that's 30 stories tall that you're trying to support yeah. while supporting your 50 story building yeah. that you're working underneath. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, one of the things that is interesting is, is the fact that no, there's one project could have a ton of different specializations working Correct. together. Yeah. Um, from the engineering side, you have the architect side, but then you have the business side, right? And the thing that a lot of people don't, uh, who may not be involved with the industry, um, may not realize is how involved the engineers are with the developers, with the planners, with the banks. Kind of explain that side of the, you know, when you went into engineering, did you actually think 
well, yeah, I'm going to have meetings with, you know, investment bankers or, you know. So I, I, I will. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good <laughs> right? point. I, I, I spend a considerable amount of time talking to college students and mm-hmm. I, I tell them if you're good at your job, you won't be doing engineering for too long. Yeah. And, and I'll say if uh, when I first started my career, I spent a lot of time in the math and science of things and mm-hmm. doing analysis. And then as you attend more project meetings, mm-hmm. the client the financial side of the client, they start to show up more at yeah. the meetings. But a project of this magnitude, because it was such such a it was such a financial endeavor, let yeah. alone an engineering endeavor, that you had the financial aspects part of it the mm-hmm. whole time. There was plenty of presentations that I was part of yeah. where I had to explain how the project works mm-hmm. to a financial partner, whether they're yeah. lending on a project or they're doing the checks and balances on a project to make sure the project pencils out. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously, you know, this project spanned COVID, right? So yeah. it started before COVID and it finished after COVID. So when you start seeing those sort of things and maybe a ho- it, it seems crazy, but a hotel mm-hmm. in Times Square, there's a lot of them. Yeah. But this was not just a hotel. This was a retail expansion. This was a performative mm-hmm. arts, like there's a, a theater aspect to yep. it. But then there's also things that they put in the LED screens and, and things for the performance issues that mm-hmm. they're, or the performance items that they're going to have in Times Square as yep. part, of, part of the ball drop and the New Year's Eve and, and things like that. I mean, and it's really made, a transformative. And you made the point of, like, you know, this work happened the below ground right. over f- the course of four ball drops. Right. Easily, yeah. Maybe you know, a more. Maybe, maybe a little more. more maybe yeah. a little bit more. You have all these people who are coming in and out. I mean, it is tour central. Right. Um, it's it's there's a there's there's a lot of risk there, and it's and and there's a lot of of potential for something going wrong, and it's a testament to the engineers who are doing all the work underground to make sure that everything that can happen there supports everything above ground. What people see. That's correct. I mean, it does. It does go back to that idea that an engineer's job done well is one that's not seen. And the only time that you actually realize the engineer was involved is if something terrible were to happen. It, it, you know, it's, it is this, I don't know, it's for people out there who, who, who may not know, well, what do the engineers do? It's like, well, they make everything that you could possibly do possible. Correct. And, and if done well, you're not actually going to actually notice it actually happened at all. Right. Right. You know, I, I mean, it's funny. I, I tell folks that, especially for what I do in soils. Yeah. Uh, I have x-ray vision when I walk the street. Yeah. I, I don't see a concrete sidewalk on a roadway, mm-hmm. especially if there's a subway underneath it. Yeah. I picture girders, beams, you know, concrete, steel. I picture the utilities. Mm-hmm. I don't, we don't just look at it as, as because we understand that, you know, you can't just remove a piece of sidewalk and expect to dig down yeah. and not disrupt a utility service, mm-hmm. disrupt access to that building, things like that. So we, we deal with that every day. And, and frankly, that's where the experience and the understanding mm-hmm. comes in. And that's that's where we really show our value. Yeah. Is and, and I make the joke, like talking about again about the financial aspects of it. Mm-hmm. If the job was to stop for a week, mm-hmm. the financial implications of just like stopping and uh, having to massive, pay massive. massive. So our again, we're trying to see where the problems are, mm-hmm. have that thousand yard stare and look down, mm-hmm. look down and mitigate any potential issues that come out later. Yeah. So a lot of it is weighing that it's a chess game. It's, it's so many different things. And yeah. a project of this magnitude, we're meeting as a team four or five days a week. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking yeah. every day and you have a lot of professionals in a room. Probably, I mean, some of the meetings are probably more expensive than, than you would believe. But <laughs> I can imagine in New York, definitely. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's everything on steroids, right? Right. But, you know, the other thing is just, you know, the fir- your firm has been involved in a lot of projects that have significance to the city of New York, but also to America. I mean, we were talking about the work on the slurry wall for the 9-11 memorial. Yes. We're talking about Trinity Church which, you know, I was, I was personally down in lower Manhattan. I was, I was there, you know, at, during, during, during 9-11 and, and Trinity Church was definitely a landmark, definitely the kind of thing that for people who know where it was, the fact that it even survived is amazing. Right. And then bringing it back to where it was, the work that was done on the story wall, the work that was done in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Right. Um, you and I were there. We let's talk. We realized we were at the same place at the same time when That's Pope right. Francis came. That's right. The late Pope Francis came to St. Patrick's. Um, having that mark on things, 
you know, personally, what does it mean to you to be able to say, you know, yeah, you know, I worked on the revitalization of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah. You know, that that is something that is going to be there for generations to come. And being able to say that, yeah, I had a, I, I left a mark on that. What does it mean personally to you as, a, as an engineer? So, I mean, as a geotechnical engineer, we have a small part of larger projects. Yeah. So we we get to work on maybe a sh maybe other engineers might work on two to three projects in a given year. Mm -hmm. We might be working on 20 to 30 yeah. projects. So I, I get to have this expanse of whether it's a new tower or revitalizing St. Pat's or working on something like that. Yeah. One, one of the things that I was particularly happy or proud of at St. Pat's, mm -hmm. which is also another EEA award winning, yeah. was we did the laser scanning of St. Pat's mm -hmm. back in 2008-ish uh, mm -hmm. time when scanning and surveying yeah. was still fairly new. It was done, mm -hmm. but it was fairly new. And we brought, we brought this to a project where, frankly, we, we did it kind of at cost to show people what, it's what, possible. what's possible. Yeah. And then using that technology to build models or then finding out when in and scanned some other aspects of like decorative type mm -hmm. things with the cathedral yeah. and seeing that. And then we, going in as far as scanning the roof structure and yeah. stuff like that. And now you see laser scanning, BIM modeling and all this everywhere. being done everywhere. It's, yeah. it's a project necessity. Mm -hmm. So you would say to yourself, like, why? I, I, I made the argument, like, I think we should scan all institutional yeah. churches and stuff and make an immersive visual aid that mm -hmm. you can walk through. So it's funny, although that was, you know, not geotechnical per se, but coming in and seeing our surveying group do that and now seeing this technology just implemented everywhere. Yeah. And and talk about engineers, we're in data, we're in all yeah. this. So it's it's really good and, and, and <laughs> taking that and building it to other institutions, whether mm -hmm. it's the Met Museum or yeah. it's the Museum of Natural History in New York. Federal Hall, mm -hmm. Trinity Church, scanning yeah. all these things. It's also great. And then doing all that. You're also creating a historical record now. You, right. You're doing, yes. you're, you're creating the, the 3D models of things that, that are, are, are intrinsic to America. Right. And, and I'm sure that you've discovered some things in that, in those scans that, you know, the people who uh, operate the churches or, 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 you know, never even realized were there or, or, right. or you know, identified some things. I mean, what, one of the funny, I, I'd say it's funny, but one of the funny stories that I look at is, and I never thought about this yeah. as an engineer, but when the renovation at St. Pat's was occurring, there was stone that was being cleaned and fixed. And then you realize because it was dirty and, and yeah. seasoned that it didn't match the historic stone that was there. So uh -huh. then seeing the architect spent a lot of time with the structural engineers to go and find the correct quarry to mm -hmm. repurpose some of those stones and stuff that you're seeing with the rebuilding of Notre Dame. Yeah. It, they're having the same issues. We're trying to match stones and, and match. And this is stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about from geotechnical matching the retaining wall that surrounds the cathedral and items mm -hmm. like that. And then, yeah. and then using that knowledge to, when you're talking about stabilizing the palace theater mm -hmm. NTSX, you're, you're working with that team. Believe it or not, we, we had a lot of the same landmark consultants that were working on TSX, yeah. also working on the cathedral. And it, it's amazing to see that. Mm -hmm. And then we know the landmarks process. We know yeah. how to deal with these things. And we take this very serious because yeah. we understand that to, to mess with a landmark like that or disrupt it can have, we're not talking, it's not stuff that could be replaced. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, yeah. So, yeah. And it's, it's it is, it, it's a, also that, you don't have a. It's not a huge group of people. It's it, it's it's that relationship building and it's that community Absolutely. of people who can actually work on these projects, right? Right. right. And it's being part of that larger team, which yeah. You know. And or look at the workmanship. Like I mentioned, the quarries yeah. and the stones. Some of these processes are gone. Yeah. There's nobody that does this type of stone mason type yeah. work. Like yeah. these, these are sort of things. So to to capture this and be part of these teams. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say my kids and my wife get tired of me saying, hey, I worked on that. I worked on that. We can't walk around Times Square without yeah. pointing to all the projects. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my kids are still young enough to where they'll be like, oh, that's great. Dad. Yeah. My wife is kind of like, uh, she was in the industry as well. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I know, so, I know, I know, I know. I have to remind her sometimes that she worked on these as well. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. But, you know, but, that, that, you know, let's let's we talked a little bit also about, you know, the next generation trying to get kids involved, excited about this stuff, you know. It's it's beyond the math and science. What we're talking a lot about here is the cultural stuff, the the the, the business stuff, talking to people, the soft skill right. stuff. 
You know, I mean, what do you think we should be doing as an industry better to, to get those next generation kids who are like, OK, yeah, math and science. But boy, that's really cool. I'd like to get involved with that. So I'm the type of person I I, I mean, I'm talking a little I'm being selfish for a yeah. moment. Uh, I don't waste any minutes in a day. Mm -hmm. So if I see an opening, I try to fill it with something. Yeah, I think there's a lot more there's a lot more unused space in the mentoring. Mm hmm in going to speak to schools, yeah. going to speak with your alma mater, mm -hmm. and that our firms could be doing more of. Yeah. Whether it's like some some firms are represented in parts of our state or country where maybe they don't have a big university mm -hmm. nearby, but guess what? They have a community college nearby. Yeah. Are they interacting with that college? Mm -hmm. They got high schools nearby. Are they interacting? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about much. Like just a little bit of involvement can mm -hmm. move the move that that uh, temperature. Yeah, in a in a great direction, and and I'll tell you, a lot of what I got interested in mm -hmm. was someone taking a chance with me on an internship, mm -hmm. someone coming in and telling me what they do for a living, yeah. and me going, "Wow, that's pretty interesting. I would mm -hmm. really like to be involved with that." Yeah, and then, like, really enjoying what I'm doing. If if you truly love what you do, and mm -hmm. you go speak to a school, a yeah. high school, a middle school, an elementary school, and they see that type of energy. And then you kind of relate to him. I, I was speaking to my daughter's school, who's a uh, fourth grader. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started talking about a project and they're all a TSX actually. Yeah. And they're starting to, oh, all right. But then when I showed them the video of the theater raising and I got to tell them, hey, who likes to play in soil? Uh -huh. And they're all raised their hand. And I said, I get paid to do that. They're like, no way. Yeah. They, they didn't even know yeah. what a geotechnical engineer was. And now yeah. they're, you know, going around and saying, maybe, maybe I can get, if I can get one, mm -hmm. that's a win. Yeah. So I, I think, I think industry wise, we should be, the leaders of the firms should be pushing the younger emerging leaders of the firms to do more, a little bit more. We're not asking much, but maybe once a week. Yeah. Get out there. Twice a month. Get out get there. Out there. It, it will all, and, and, and they'll, they're building the workforce that they're going to be directing. Yeah. Right. 20 years in their career. These are the people that are coming to work. So, Absolutely. So this is, they're only helping themselves. Yeah. So. And it's, I mean, like you said, you were at the, at the onset of, 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 of laser scanning. Yeah. God, you know, who knows what it's going to be by the time the next generation gets out oh, yeah. there. I mean, with yeah. the way the AI is doing things and the yeah. way that just everything's going digital. I mean, we have drone scans. You have all this, like, and AI is enhancing our business. Yeah. Uh, the, the mathematical modeling and stuff mm -hmm. that we're enhancing our business. Yeah. We're able to get more accurate. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to, we're building, I mean, look at the exponential increase in the, the height of buildings all yes. over the world. Yeah. I mean, you have areas of the world that didn't have a single building over 10 stories that are now having blocks that have mm -hmm. 40 or 50 skyscrapers over yeah. 30, 50 stories tall. So yeah. th this is what we should be emphasizing. And if you want to be part of this, and, yeah. and especially with, you know, the way that we're building everything and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's good to see some of this work come back to the United States, do a lot of, you know, scene yeah. development, not just in the major metropolitan areas, but more of the rural areas. Yeah. Like there, there's positions out there for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a, it's a great project. I mean, truly, I mean, taking a historic building, raising it, doing all the work to actually allow that to happen. Right. I mean, it, it truly is something. And I'm glad that it's going to be recognized in the awards program. Um, you guys are no strangers to the awards program. No. Um, and it's good to be celebrated again this year. So I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday Great. at the event and, uh, look forward to having you back on. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta talk about some other things. We gotta talk about some other projects. I That'd mean, be great. Yeah. yeah. You got an open door to come back. Yeah. It sounds good. I would love to. This is, uh, as my mother always says, uh, I, I'd probably talk to an empty room. So, Hey, listen, you know, it's, it, what are they, it was the, the, the joke about, you know, the engineers are usually, you know, introverted. Right. So, hey, if you want to talk to, you, you can come here and talk to us anytime you want. <laughs> Sounds good. Outstanding. Love, love to. <laughs> Fantastic. And again, this has been Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies, and we will see you next time.